I met Dylan about four years ago. Um, it was he was I met him on my hall, uh, M22 two on the hill. Um, we called it Trip Deuce. And I didn't really meet him until the end of the first semester. Um, but I always see him around, I always see him walking the halls. One day I was walking to Combo. Actually, I'm sorry. I was walking um, after Combo to class. And he came beside me, he's like, hey man, how's it going? I see you on my hall. And we started talking and he, was, he asked me if I wanted to go to get some lunch with him. But I had a class, I had Humanities 101. And I'm like, man, I got class. Um, but I decided to skip and it ha would happen to be the best decision I ever made. So after living on the, uh, on the, the hill, um, all my friends, including Dylan, uh, we all moved to the quads, and eventually we all, we moved off campus separately, but still almost every day we would all hang out. And that group of guys was uh, my buddy Jonah, my brother Josh, um, and then my two other friends, Evan and Garvin, along with Dylan. And we all had great memories together, but there was there was a lot of moments where I had just um, when I hung off Dylan by myself. Like um, um, almost every Sunday, him and I would go to the White Hart, and uh, we would just get coffee and we play chess on the outside um, on the outside deck that they have. And it was always just remember always being nice weather, and we'd just sit there talking about life and just just hanging out. Um, when I moved off campus, we had a lot of memories of just late nights at my loft. Um, all the guys would come over and play video games or board games. The last moments I have with Dylan, um, we were just hanging out at the loft. It was a beautiful night. And we would play, we would just do random stuff. We made up our own game. We made up human bowling with a basketball. Um, didn't really work, but we tried. Um, before he left, and Dylan was very silly. He was very romancy. He would make jokes all the time. But um, before he left, he gave me a hug. He's like, bye, Gerber. And he kisses me on the forehead. And at the time, I was like, oh, that's hilarious or whatever. Like, didn't say that, but it was just funny. And that was his normal way of just being himself. Um, but I had no idea that was going to be the last time I would see him. So the day that it happened, um, he ended up going hiking with Jonah and his girlfriend um, on Sharp Top, and none of us, none of the other guys, could make it because we all had class or we had to work. Um, but I remember at seven o'clock that night, I was hanging out with um, my brother and Haley, and we were just just watching TV, chilling, and all of a sudden. Um, we got a text from Jonah saying, hey, and it was in our group chat, and he said, hey, I need everyone to come to the pastoral um, offices at North. And the pastor came in, he sat us down, and he said, um, your friend Dylan was hiking today, and I forgot what time it was, but he said it's, he fell off the top of the cliff and he died instantly and he was no longer with us. More people came and in a way I think God can use the worst moments of our life to show him that he's there because I've never seen that many people that I knew gather at once and pray constantly um, and that was great. And it's weird because in moments of um, going through hard times, of going through tragedy, you do have glimpses of hope. But then there's the reality of the person still gone. It's hard still. But the five of us, the remaining five of us are still there. And for anyone who deals with this, um, you just got to keep your friends close regardless of who you lost and don't ever ever take anybody for granted because there's situations where you see that happen and you're like because before it happened to us we were like when people died on our campus it's it happens to every campus students pass but you never think it's going to be you or your group until it is 
and then you got to figure out how do you move on. 